Hi folks, and welcome to Reverend Review. I'm your host, Reverend Dave, and today we're going to take a look at my Mauser 7184. That is the Mauser 1871-1884. This here rifle is an, a World War I bring back. Um, a friend of my family, a friend of ours, their family, a family member of theirs, brought it back as a war trophy from World War I and it's been in their family ever since being passed down from this person to that person uh, within their family kept in a closet for decades and when they were cleaning up after someone had passed and they were going through and throwing things away they came across this rifle they remember it being on the top of the fireplace at one time anyway so i got it for a good price uh had it restored and, um, and so that's what we're going to take a look at today. I don't know a lot about the um, Mauser 7184, but if you take a look at Forgotten Weapons, uh, Ian over there, he does a great video on the Mauser 7184 in pretty good condition like this one. And um, I'm going to link to it below. You just search for that link down below and you'll see his video and you'll be able to get an idea more about this weapon however what i will do is i'll show you some things about mine um and and go from there um now these rifles you know they used to be frontline rifles this was not this was this rifle here was never a frontline rifle um and the reason i know that is because when they were frontline rifles belonging to infantry units um, infantry units uh, unit would be marked there. This was for some by World War I um, a truck driver, a cook, somebody's um, rifle or something like that. One that wouldn't see a lot of service and that's or use and that's why this is in such great shape. Um, let me go back. If you keep in mind you see right here you see the 96 um, and then the proof stamp and this rifle's all matching. I'll show you the serial number here in a second, uh, but just keep that in mind. Even the screws are stamped, um, are serialized. That's how you know it's all parts matching. So you see my serial number here is 2896. Everything, a lot of everything else on this rifle, you'll see 96 stamped on it. Uh, if you see here, you'll see 1095, 10, that'll be October 1895. And that's when this uh, rifle was placed in the reserves. Um, and then, of course, sometime after 1895, because this rifle was made in 1888. So in 1895, this rifle was um, brought out of reserves and given to secondary units uh, in World War I. So, as you can see here, you know, the serial number again, 2896. EW, that's for Wilhelm, Wilhelm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name all wrong. He was the emperor, king, or whatever of um, Germany at the time. And this rifle was made in the Spandau uh, arsenal, which is in Berlin. You see some pitting here. I've had the pitting cleaned up, so it's no issue. Just a little surface rust, a little pitting. Um, and of course, here are some stamps on it. I do want to show you something. That's pretty interesting. So when I buy a, a weapon that's an old weapon, I would like to have some kind of coin memorabilia that that represents that. And that's what I have here. Um, in here I have um, some coins from the Second Reich, because we all know of the Third Reich or, Reich or whatever, which was uh, Hitler's Germany in World War II. Well, that was the Third. There's also a Second Reich and a First Reich. Well, the Second Reich was uh, it ended in World War One, um, and so this was some coins before that end happened, and it talks a bit about about some of this. And there's Wilhelm right there. He was the king of Germany, um, Emperor Wilhelm II. You know when he gave up his throne in eight, 1918 after World War One had ended. So it's always good to have a nice piece of history um, and coins to go along with it. It just goes to tell a story anyway so a little more about this rifle here uh, not a whole lot more I could tell you because there's not a whole lot I know 
as you can see, 96 right there. All parts matching. Let me turn the rifle around. This is a heavy rifle, um, and it is a repeating rifle. So even on this side of the same, that's a proof mark right there. So we'll go ahead and look at the um, the front here. You can see the rifling inside. You can see the sight. Now this is not a cleaning rod. Um, this is just a a cap for the magazine tube because this is a repeating rifle. So the 1871, this would be a cleaning rod or something, and there wouldn't be a um, um, magazine tube under here. Um, this is where, like, just like a shotgun loads up, you know, the rounds come underneath, and that's how this would go. Um, so everything operates pretty much the same as the 1871. Some minor adjustments were made for the 1884. Um, and they made this, this was the first repeating rifle, um, even though it was 11 millimeter, and this is like the bayonet lug right here. Even though it was eight millimeter, it, um, or 11 millimeter, not eight millimeter. The, the World War One by World War One, they were using eight millimeter again. I mean, not again, but they started using eight millimeter, and they would use that up until, you know, and beyond there. So as I'm just rambling along here, just looking at the the proof markings there. So as we go along, you see right here, my rifle was made in 1888, and even the even the buttstock right here had proof markings. So. Got a little take up right there, but beautiful. Let me just show you a little thing before I end the video. Again, if you wanna know more in depth about the Mauser 7184, there are a few videos on the inter on YouTube and on the internet, but not many. So when it's like in this mode right here with this, this lever goes back and forth. When it's set forward like that, this, you cannot open to the magazine tube and you can just feed a shell feed it one by one and that's how they would do this they would just feed one round lock and load fire another round so forth however when they were told or what have you to use the rounds in their magazine tube they would pull this back see this switch right here right there so what would happen is when they it would cause this uh, little trap door to go down and it would start picking up rounds from inside. Then when you pull back on it, it would come up. You could load the round. Again, when you shot the round, you could pull it out. It would eject the round, go down, pick up another one. Now in this rifle right here, I am missing the um, magazine follower. I have a spring for it but I don't have a magazine follower. Um, I've been looking for a magazine follower, and if you know where I could find one, let me know in the comments. I would greatly appreciate that. So there we go. Push this back forward. Little take up down there. It's a great little shooting rifle. Again, this is the Model 7184. If you like this video, and you like the other videos of mine, and you want to see when I come out with new videos, just give me that thumbs up and go ahead and hit subscribe and share the video. And I will do my best to get out more videos, more content um, as I'm able. Beautiful all parts matching rifle. World War I trophy brought back by an American soldier. Kept it in his house for decades and now I'm the owner of it. And it's a pretty beautiful rifle. All right, you guys have a good day. Be blessed.